Hello, my name is Leo, and welcome to this little passion project of mine, a playthrough of Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, with a bit of a twist. Not only I will be going through the game and sharing with you the story and the lore, of course, because we cannot make a playthrough of a From Software game without talking about the lore, but I will also be going into a little bit more depth into a couple of aspects. On the one hand, on the structural elements of this game, such as the level design and the game design, which are things that I'm personally very passionate about, and on the other, all of the cultural and historical background that are so important to the setting of this game, um, alongside which I will also be providing something of an addendum to the official English translation to cover up all of the holes that were uh, that are left um, in the game as it is. Uh, to do all of that, each episode of this series is going to be divided into two parts. The biggest main part is going to be a straightforward playthrough with commentary where I will just stop and talk about stuff as they come up, but it's going to be more of a free flow and discovering the game together uh, as it is presented to us. And at the end of each video, I'm going to do in post commentary, I'm going to go over what we covered and introduce all of the extra elements which are a little bit too complex for me to just kind of remember them on the top of my head as I'm playing. Uh, which will make the experience, I hope, that much more interesting and in-depth. Sekiro, as a game, has a lot to love, which I feel is often overlooked, um, and I want to share that with people as much as I can. If that is already does already sound like, ideal and <laughs> interesting to you, then you can just skip ahead. I've been... I have put a timestamp in the description, um, so you can just click on that and jump straight into the action. But I would also like to introduce myself a little bit first and tell you what my credentials are for doing something like this and where I want to go with it. So if you're interested in that, just stick around a little bit longer and bear with me. So I'm a game designer first and foremost, which is where I think I am a credible source for an analysis of this game as a game. Maybe not the technical aspects of it, there are better people than me to talk about, the graphics and the programming and the technology and all of that, but when it comes to the system, to the, the levels, the mechanics and all of that, um, if you are like me, somebody who is interested in all the stuff I feel like I can provide some quality content for that. When it comes to the Japanese history and folklore, and especially the Japanese language, um, I am hugely passionate about that stuff, but I cannot count myself as an actual expert uh, per se. Luckily, the internet is a thing, uh, and there are a lot of people out there who, are, who actually are experts on all of this stuff. Um, some which I, I know personally, most of the others in which I have uh, seen the research online and interacted with uh, as part of communities and stuff like that. Uh, so I will be collating a lot of information and putting together all of my research and the help from people that I know and the help from people from the secular community, for example, that have done some great work. Um, to be, a, be able to go in depth and explore how much stuff this game has to offer. Whenever I use something that does not come from directly from me or, or from academic research, I will be putting links and references in the description, uh, as I feel like it's very important that people get credited for the work that they do. As what I want, what I want from this series is mostly to be something that both somebody that is completely new, um, that is completely new to the game, can discover the game in a very thorough manner and get as much out of it as possible, but also something that somebody 
who has already played the game um, multiple times, maybe even <laughs> like me, I've played this game a lot. I know, um, I know this game very well by this point. Can find some new meaning to it and can find s something interesting going into it. Uh, mainly because the English translation, as good as it is, and I think I think it is a very good translation, a very good adaptation of a game that is incredibly hard to adapt for a Western audience, um, has made the choice for a lot of reasons to leave out a lot of the cultural subtext, all of the Shinto references and the Buddhism and the historical context of Japan and the folklore and mythology and all of that has been kind of left out or readapted in a more generic fantasy way. So if you just play the game in English and you have no idea about any of that, you will get a good Eastern fantasy that stands well on its own. But if you go into a little bit more details and you analyze the, the Japanese dialogues and the descriptions and you know about the symbology and the meanings of the things presented then the game will be different. Not necessarily better um, but definitely more interesting and with different, with subtle differences in a lot of places. So I want to do, I want to explore all of that. So. With all of that out of the way, I think we can now jump into it, shall we?